would like to come and sit on this open chair while I give this <laughs> talk. Um, we always try to leave an open seat wherever we are, so if anyone walks in and doesn't have a chair, then here's one for you too. Um, thank you. I want to start this talk off first with my favorite place to start, which is a place of gratitude. Um, thank you, Margot, for the introduction. Thank you to Ilker for leaving such a warm stage for me in your previous talk. Uh, thank you to Tyrone and the whole AV team. AV is never easy and you make it look super smooth, so thank you. And then obviously to the whole CMX team and um, Simply Story team and everyone who worked to bring this event together. Most importantly, thank you to all of you for being here. There are a lot of places you could be and you're right here and I really appreciate that. Um, and Sam, thank you for the talk. You rocked it on the main stage. Um, I hope some of you got to catch that. Um, so I am Rebecca Marshburn, the head of community at Common Room. And I'm here to talk about community value, how better member experiences lead to better member outcomes. Um, who am I? I am the head of community at Common Room. I spend a lot of my time in the Uncommon Community Slack um, and bringing conversations and insights together from everywhere community members and customers interact. Um, I originally joined Common Room over two and a half years ago, coming from a product marketing, uh, AWS hero, um, a speechwriter background. Um, and what really stuck with me and one of the biggest reasons why I joined Common Room was because when I was leading the AWS serverless heroes, I was walking into weekly reporting meetings with VPs and SVPs with some screenshots of metrics with like social media likes. And that was not the way I wanted to walk into VP meetings. So when Linda, our CEO, and um, whom I had worked with previously, showed me the vision for how Common Room could solve and improve the community impact to business, to business impact, business outcome relationship, I was so in. And that's in part how I came to stand before you here today. What is Common Room? We call it the driver's seat of the modern customer journey, and you are the driver. The talk is not about a Common Room product lesson, but it is a Common Room vision lesson. And so for that, I do think it helps to understand what the product is a bit in order to understand how it works within the vision. So in short, Common Room brings together your product usage, your CRM, and your community data from dark funnel channels like social media, forums, content platforms, event platforms, daily chat apps that have historically not been accounted for or accurately measured in terms of their impact on business goals and outcomes into one place to service intent, to service trends, questions, and needs for your community teams, and ultimately contextual and actionable prospects and partners for your GTM teams as led by community. We have 25 minutes, so here's what we're gonna cover. We're gonna cover what we mean by better member experiences, what we mean by better business outcomes, and then what it looks like when we see customers tie community context into business goals. Um, and so when I say we, I mean like this is the approach and the lens that we are approaching it from, and I also think that there's a diversity of understanding and a diversity of opinions on better, what that word better means. So I wanted to define it here for you all so that you can, when we have conversations around it, we at least are aligned on where we're starting from, and then we can have um, discussions and debates around whether or not those are truly the better outcomes. Um, so let's start with some wise words from a long-standing community leader that we recently interviewed, um, the singular Holly Firestone, who said this as she was discussing community ROI. When you think about building out your community strategy, ultimately your goals have to roll up to your team goals, which roll up to your company goals. This is articulately put by Holly, the thesis of our team at Common Room, that community, when applied to a business context, must be a strategic driver of that business. Um, and so what Holly said seems to be on all of our minds. This idea of how do we tie our community and DevRel work and our goals to our team goals and our company goals. As an industry, I do think we are getting closer, but we've all seen that we have room to grow. When asked about our ability to prove the impact of our work on marketing outcomes, community and DevRel leaders voiced that we were frustrated and that we needed easier mechanisms to do so. Um, so these are a few numbers from both the CMX uh, 2023 Community Industry Report and our um, 2023 from Common Room, Developer Relations Compensation and Culture Report. So 36% of people, the, the, the highest number of people that had responded and the CMX report was, hey, what does it feel like trying to prove your community impact? And 36% was like the top answer and it was, it's frustrating. Um, and then our report, people said they don't have enough, uh, they have some mechanisms and it's not easy. Um, 
So when we as community teams tie our work to our broader team and company goals, and when we use the tools and the knowledge available to us now to start telling a community and a GTM story, we will approve the, the impact of our work indisputably. So I want to start from where our work as community leaders starts, and that is with the individual member experience today, which is at scale. So what do we mean by better member experiences? Um, these experiences now are everywhere. Salesforce came out in 1999, right, and it was a fledgling CRM at the time, which is kind of wild to say that just 24 years ago, this idea that Salesforce was like something new. Um, but at that time, community was in a small handful of places, right, or community type of interactions. They were on message boards, physical in-person conferences, on the end or other end of a phone line, um, a passive billboard, a fledgling CRM at that time. And the modern member journey is inextricably linked to the modern buying journey for B2B companies. And now it's more digital than ever. Your members are asking questions in forums, they're logging into your product, they're replying to each other in chat apps. They're starting real-time chats with your brand, they're sharing content on social media, they're submitting pull requests, they're recommending you to their networks, they're creating content that educates others, they're clicking through to your content, they're registering for your events. Today, member experiences go far beyond any one channel or property. It's online, it's, on, it's in person, it's hybrid, it's distributed across social, chat, forum, event, product usage data, your CRM data. It is literally everywhere. And each of these experiences helps define your community and your company. These are members on the modern customer journey who will either recommend or dissuade others to do the same. So what do we mean by better member experiences? One of the questions to ask is, are members getting what they need? And are they getting what they need across all of those touch points? Are you hearing them? Are you responding to them? Are you connecting with them in real time? Are you connecting with them in real time relevantly? Do your peer teams and stakeholders know what's valuable to them? And as community leaders, and as one myself, I'm like, and also, what about you? Are you feeling sane? <laughs> are you feeling empowered? Do you have a sense of stewardship of your community and ownership in your company across trying to manage all of these member experiences? So better member experiences are one input to community value for all sides, and the other is how those experiences drive the business forward, and then we'll tie it all together. So I want to revisit our opener. A community team's work has to lie and lie. <laughs> it doesn't have to lie, I should tell the truth has to tie to the broader team's goals. <laughs> um, what are the teams are rolling up to and what are those goals? So to go back to what Holly had said, right? Ultimately, your goals have to roll up to your team goals, which roll up to your company goals. And luckily, we know which teams predominantly we are rolling up to. This isn't true for everyone. We know that some people roll up into product. We know that some people roll up specifically into success. But for the majority of people, the highest number of um, the primary department that um, community teams roll up to as according to like um, the CMX report is uh, the marketing team and we see that even more in DevRel teams. Um, and so luckily we know what teams that we're trying to roll up to and then we know what their goals are. It's marketing goals and their role in the broader go-to-market vision that we roll up to as community leaders for businesses. And those goals we also know, the most common goals in the GTM side that community teams have a primary focus on are product adoption and user acquisition. So that means working with GTM functions like marketing and sales to help them understand your members based on what you know from everywhere they're interacting. Can you help grow top of funnel prospects based on member profiles, their industries, their companies, their titles, and most importantly, what they are asking and what they are sharing, the context and insights you have about them? Can you help convert target accounts based on organizational context, like knowing how many employees requested a feature that was recently shipped? Can you turn cold outbound warm by empowering sales teams with personalized context based on what's been top of mind for a member or how they've been using your product? So like Holly said, we've got to roll our community strategies up into those GTM goals. We have to tell an and story together. Community and marketing, community and sales, community and success, community and product. It's not just community and everything else, it is community and, and how do we tie these things together? We've got to align our work with the goals of marketing and the broader go-to-market motion that it drives forward. 
So in community in DevRel, we have a special superpower, and this is my favorite thing about the role. We have access to member insights that inform better, more contextual, more timely, more impactful marketing motions and sales conversations. And member insights that enable us as community leaders to deliver deeper, more value-matched content, resources, and experiences. So now comes the question around better business outcomes. Is your company getting what it expects? Is your community strategy rolling up into your primary team's goals and the goals of the business? Are you able to use your superpower, the contextual understanding you have around who your members are, what they need and what they want, to deliver impactful insights and actions back to your company from the community that you are, that you are a steward of, from the community that you create a space for? The age of a handful of channels where members had experiences is very, very far away now. And I'm so glad because we have all come so far. There are so many ways that our community members can interact with us, and now there are so many ways that we're able to hear them, respond to them, listen to them, and serve them. So the tools available to us today as community leaders, we have the ability to put our superpowers to good use. We can tie community context to business goals to serve both our members and our organizational goals better. When it comes to GTM and the business, what do those goals actually look like? There are so many faces of adoption and acquisition, but here are six core goals that we hear from GTM teams across the board, and we at Common Room share them too. As part of the marketing department with GTM level goals, we as a community team, we as community teams are looking to do things like uncover intent signals and answer the question, is someone ready to buy? If they are, we want to empower our cross-functional teams to have those conversations with real knowledge about that person's why and their where and their what and their when. We're looking to improve customer experiences to expand more accounts and to see less churn. We're looking to answer the question like, is someone ready to grow their use case? We're looking to ensure that target accounts where we know there's strong value alignment are converting into sales conversations. As community leaders, we can help our cross-functional teams answer the question, who is the right person to talk to? Who is the economic buyer? Who is the person that owns this goal? Then there's a the perennial question, if someone speaks into the dark funnel and no one's around to hear it, do they make a sound? We are looking to understand high intent signals before they're seen as signals anywhere else. So much happens before a customer hits your website, logs into your product, or opens an email. And most of those signals are happening across the channels you steward as a community leader. They're happening in channels where your members interact with you, like Slack, like Discord, like LinkedIn, like Twitter X, like Discourse, like GitHub, like YouTube. When people speak into the dark funnel, we as community leaders can make sure we are around to hear it. We're looking to, cold tur to turn cold outreach into warm introductions. We as community teams create the spaces and can provide the context that enables our colleagues to have contextual conversations that truly and actually address a prospect's needs and goals. We're looking to up-level product-led growth and help our teams answer the question, is there a feature set that would be right for a customer's objective? Have we recently launched something that a customer should know about, that a prospect should know about, that we can actually now solve their problems that they've been asking for across our dark, dark funnel channels? So what does it look like in the wild when a community team connects member experiences and GTM goals? I want to look at one example that answers the question, is someone ready to buy? Let's say you've got 32,000 members who have interacted with you across all of your community product and CRM surfaces. That is a lot of member data with a lot of different member needs and potential business opportunities. But you and your GTM counterparts have worked together to understand who fits your ideal customer profile. Shout out to my GTM counterparts and thank you for being here. I see you. So let's talk about some of our ideal customer profiles, right? These are folks at companies which would get a ton of value from your product. You know they have titles in sales, community, DevRel, marketing, and demand gen. You know they're at organizations with more than 500 employees. You know that they've raised over $5 million. You filter for those exact attributes and you get to 11,000 members. That's a little more refined, but it's still a lot, and your team still need timely, relevant context before reaching out to them. Layer on the knowledge of who's been active in your community in the last 14 days and what they've shared and asked for, now you have a strong signal from 215 recently engaged community members who fit your ideal community customer profile. And now you and your GTM teams can reach out to high signal members 
based on context around what they're looking to solve and why your product would actually serve their goals. This time the conversation is natural and timely rather than random and forced. And it's possibly because of the community that you and your team stewards. Remember all those sources at the beginning of the talk that were like all over? Now they're all on the right side, your left side rather. And my strong belief strongly held is that the modern way of delivering better business outcomes is by delivering better actually personal and relevant member experiences. So you take all those conversations and questions and content and product usage and CRM insights and attribute them to real individuals with real individual context. Those individuals are unique and they have unique goals and perspectives depending on their role within an organization and within your community. So now I can talk specifically to Sarah, an engineer who matches our ideal customer profile and works at a target account, and let my sales counterpart know that she hasn't logged in since she started her free trial last week. And I can easily get help for Joe, who posted a product question in Slack and wanted to activate a deeper integration. And Mike, who's an OG fan, thanks Mike, and a great connection for expanding into his new company because he loved us at his previous one. And Jesse, who would be someone with budget, um, or what we would call an economic buyer, um, that me, our marketing, and our sales team should know about. With the tools available today, community teams can lead the way for how we as organizations operate on an individual per human basis. Because now we know it's happening on a per human basis, not just a per account basis. Because we can operate in real time and enable our customers, and our counterparts rather, to take action when it's natural and relevant to our members. And because we can operate wherever our members are and meet them cross platform, cross channel, and cross language. So when members are served well, companies are too. We started out with this hypothesis at Common Room and after two years in the wild, we have seen our hypothesis proven out. I'd like to leave you with a few business impact numbers that really drive home what the power of community can do. In a business context, the power of community is so much bigger than any business, but in the business context, I'll say. In an aggregated report of real company data, we've anonymized this data here for privacy. Community impacted open pipeline in the millions of dollars. Community engaged deals, or folks who had engaged in the community at some point, but not necessarily the first touch point, so we're not even talking about right now the community first, we're just looking at community engaged, comprise 61% of open pipeline. And we saw that as the company grew its focus and investment in the community, the proportion of community engaged deals grew. In terms of community's impact on closed one deals, more than two thirds of closed one deals included community members. We also saw here, again, as the company grew its focus on community, the proportion of closed one deals that included community members grew too. And then this is my favorite one. Community accelerated those deals. Deal cycles that involved pre-existing community members were at least 20% faster. So let's look at a blue line and a gray line. This blue line represents the end of the deal cycle for community engaged deals. And this gray line represents the end of the deal cycle for anyone who is not engaged in community. That's how much longer it took on average when someone was not a part of the community. So community, GTM, and each other, that's how we're gonna create better member experiences, improve our impact on better business outcomes. And I have great hope and a deeper belief that we'll all have more numbers that prove this, even more in our collective vision and our collective talks next year. And I'm really excited to go there with you. Thank you. Any questions? Yeah. <laughs> okay, we're going to open it up for a few minutes of questions. If anyone has any, we've got a little mic we can pass you quickly. Oh, just over there. All right. Coming around. Hi. Uh, question is. Um, something like if, if a company uses Zendesk for tickets, is that, can that be one of the channels that you aggregate from, uh, given that that's an authenticated space, right? It's not public. We have a ton of integrations, and I'm going to look over here really quick to make sure I'm saying this correctly. Um, you all, you, you all want to um, school me on exactly if whether or not we have a Zendesk or whether or not it would be like an API experience or a Zapier. Yes. 
Because we, yeah, we have we webhooks, APIs, and Zapier. So I'm, but we don't have it as like a. It's not a tile that yeah. you're going to click on. We're going to make it for you, right? If, if you actually like dig into the integrations on Common Room when you go look, right, you're not going to see Zendesk. But we can definitely build it out via API without a question. And I believe a couple of our customers probably already do it as well, right, Mitch? Yeah, yeah for sure. So. Alex, right? Yeah. yeah. Thank you for the question. Um, what I definitely don't want to do is like, of course we can, and they're like. <laughs> so yeah, of course we can. Okay, good. <laughs> Thank you for the question. Anyone else? Oh yeah, right in the front here. All right. Um, Sam, hi. Hey, Sam. Um, for people in the room who don't use Common Room just yet and want to start to show it, it business impact, so hopefully one day they can get tools for budgets. Um, budgets for tools like this, is there one thing they can go home and do today that can start to measure the impact that they do have if they don't have an aggregated tool? That's a really good question. Um, well, one, I think that they should probably revisit your talk if they weren't able to be at it. Um, but I know that, so something that you've done so well at Sneak, right, is you've built basically dashboards and they're feeding into Salesforce. I think a lot of that still does take like, um, some confidence and technical know-how in navigating those types of um, those types of platforms, essentially. Um, and so, I would also say, <laughs> sort of like watching like how other people have worked through and navigated those types of platforms, and then tied that data together, um, and sort of using Common Room and the free tier, which like we have a free tier, like find tools out on the free tier, use it, see what's happening. Um, one of my favorite recent things that we've done in the Uncommon community is we set a benchmark for our community promoter score, or our CPS, um, really to understand even, like, and it's a really simple question, would you, it's just like an NPS, would you recommend this community to a peer, colleague, or friend? And there were three goals for that. One, the first goal was to understand how members were feeling about the community. The second goal was to encourage more referrals into the community, because we do know that when more people come to our community and more people are talking about us, either by experiencing Common Room through the Uncommon community or by experiencing Common Room on the free tier and then coming to the community, they are more successful faster. It bears out just like these numbers that we saw. Um, and then we also wanted it to be a, a product how-to teaching moment. So we had three goals around it. And then what we went back to the community with is we were like, hey, this is what you told us. And we actually have a 70% yes score. And that means there's 30% that are maybes, no, not reallys, and no's. So there's a lot of room there to grow. And I do think that using any tool, whether or not it's a free tool of Common Room, obviously that's like my thumbs up one, or any tools where you can start to get any benchmark numbers and then really start to say like, so here's what you're, we're going to change or here's what we're going to improve. Here's what we're going to, here's our direction of where we're going to go based on the feedback that we got. And now we're going to see if we can improve those benchmark numbers. And then we like, you set up basically whatever KPIs that might be for your GTM teams, right? Where it's like, okay, do we want to have more economic buyers? Let me see how I actually reach out to those ec economic buyers or use the people that were yeses for my community's promoter score and say, okay, would you make one warm introduction for me into someone who you know is in this space that would get value out of my product. And so I think you can start to take those yeses, deepen those relationships based on, and those asks even, right? Based on they're getting value from this space that you're creating. And then they would like to, like, yes, I would refer someone. You're like, great, well, can you? Will you please refer someone? And here are the types of people that we're looking for. And so I really do think as long as you know what your GTM or product team's ultimate goals are, then you can start to really understand which members can help you get there and be really transparent with those members. Like really appreciate that you want to, um, that you want to refer us. Here's the best people that you could refer to us. Do you know any of them? <laughs> These are the people we'd like to have conversations with. And so that's not going to be like scaling data in aggregate, but that is going to start to be able to tie those, um, like we were introduced through a community member to this person who ended up buying that otherwise would not ha we otherwise did not have an open conversation with. We otherwise weren't able to get an introduction with. We otherwise weren't able to get a call with. Then you're really able to start to even show those micro connections between community and revenue goals and revenue outcomes. And then you get a little bit more resources, a little bit more trust in the, like, 
in what the community is serving, a little bit more latitude to start to build with tools um, that really enable you to then do that at scale. Awesome. I think we are perfectly at time. Oh, we have so, 10 seconds left. Look at that. 10 seconds. Oh, it's counting up. That's bad. <laughs> <laughs>